Hey, welcome back to The Plumber Show. My name is Dan. Hi, everyone. I'm V. And I'm Okrisa. Let's go. I have a lot of questions for you, Dan. All right. So today I'm going to show you how to do a 45 offset and calculate it. Some people like to eyeball it. I suck at eyeballing it. So you can see that we're at 10 and 4 inches. So I got a six inch offset. Multiply that by 1.414. Did on my calculator. Why is he doing math? I'm really bad at math. math. We got wiggle room in that hole, so I'll just do eight and a half. Why is he doing math there? So technically, I there's actually a lot of math and plumbing, believe it or not. So take the fitting. This guy's this guy's really trying to show everybody the true way to do a plumbing offset. Because like I said, I suck at eyeball. Can we say that in the video? Don't quite make it perfect. That's not the line. But basically, you draw a line down the center on both sides, and then. You measure from where those lines intersect to the inside of the hub of the fitting, and that's the amount that you take hmm. off of that original. This eight looks eight really eight hard. Eight. Well, no. I'm I'm just gonna tell you real quick that there's a way faster way to do that um, because I don't know if the video got paused. I, I mean, the math behind it is solid. I mean, that's the kind of math that we actually learn when we go to school to become a plumber. Mm -hmm. So um, a plumbing apprenticeship is four years in that there's a lot of math. There's a lot of offset. There's a lot of math on offsets and how to figure out what an offset is. And so he was talking about that. But the easier way is to just take uh, and draw it on the floor. And so if you're just looking for the offset, so I think he said it was uh, 10 and 4. And so he was just looking at what the offset was in between. If you actually take the fittings and you put them on the floor, just like uh, one like this, and you actually like measure off. So let's just say four and 10 and you put your fittings where each one goes, you can take your tape and then you can just measure across really quick. And within like, I don't know, four seconds, I could have that number like that. <laughs> and then I could cut it, install it. But if you're taking like, um, you know, 20 minutes to figure out what the offset is, uh, it's, you know, you're going to get probably fired because <laughs> someone's going to say, dude, you're way too slow as a plumber. So pick it up. But I think what he's trying to do is he's just for educational purposes. He's trying yeah. to show us, you know, yeah. this is the way to do it. And he's spot on. Don't get me wrong. The guy's doing a great mm -hmm. job. It's just going to take way too long for anybody in real time to do anything like that. So, and it doesn't really matter at the end of the day because it's all going to be behind a wall. So as long as it looks good, meaning aesthetically and it works, um, that's great, but you don't want to have to take an hour to cut one piece of pipe. Um, it would take you forever to plumb that house. So plumbers are actually math genius. Well, you know, Albert Einstein, he, he was a genius. <laughs> So, yeah. I mean, I'm not going to say that um, I've got the same IQ as Albert Einstein, but I'm pretty close. Uh, <laughs> yeah. No, this is this is solid material. It's good stuff. It, it is stuff that you would learn if you were becoming a plumber, um, and they would teach you all this all this math, um, how to do the calculations for offsets. Oh. Super helpful. I mean, it would be more helpful if it was cast iron, and it had to be so specific that you don't have room for um, a mistake, but. ABS, um, you know, if you're off a little bit, you can just shave a little bit off. It's not a big deal. So um, let's keep rolling. Plumbing sounds really complicated now. Yeah. <laughs> it, it is and it isn't. Oh, he's not done yet. Oh no, that's what I mean. <laughs> yeah, he's minus in his kickoffs. He really wants to do his math equations. Yeah, no, I mean, it's... it's He's, he did a good job. It's just going to take a little it's bit longer done. that way. So um, I think, you know, it's it's up to you if you want it to be perfect and it can be perfect, then that's great. Yeah. Um, and if you have the time to do that and to sit there and, you know, calculate what every offset is going to be, um, there's, there's faster ways to do it. So that's all I was saying. Um, but end of the day, good job, dude. You did a great <laughs> job. Honestly, that was solid. 
people have been asking me, is plumbing easy? Is plumbing an easy trade to get into? To answer your question, no. Plumbing is not <laughs> easy. Plumbing is not an easy trade. If plumbing was a branch in the military, it'd be the Marines. And that's on God. The real question y'all need to be asking oh. me is, is plumbing worth it? And to that I answer, hey, so yeah, it is. Yeah, they it didn't is. back up. They didn't back that up. And that's that's so not that that anything was completely wrong with that video. I think that that's not the exact way that I would put on an angle stop. So if you could rewind it just a little bit, do you see how um, they don't have another backup wrench? And so what you want is you want two wrenches on that. One oh. wrench is going to go up from the bottom and it's going to hold the angle stop. And then the other wrench is going to tighten it up. And so once you do that, that's going to ensure that that stop's never going to fly off. Ooh. But you want to make sure that you have a backup wrench right where it comes up from the bottom of the angle stop. Where there's two sides there um, on either side. That's where you put your second wrench. And that's called a backup. And you always want to put a backup on that because if you don't, you're not going to get that nut tight. And the reason that there's a copper ferrule or a brass ferrule that goes on the copper is as that as you tighten it down, it squishes that ferrule onto the copper, making an indentation on the copper. So you cannot pull that off with your bare hands. Like you could pull, pull, and pull. You'd never get it off. But the way that they did it there, you could pull it off. And then with pressure being 40 to 60 PSI, some houses go up to 80 PSI. It could work loose over time and it could flood your house. So is plumbing easy? No. Did that person do it correct? Not technically because they should have used a backup wrench to get that nut tighter. But I know they were just showing everybody how to do it. And so that's helpful. Uh, but at the end of the day, if you're going to do it, you should do it right. And you should show people how to do it right because you don't want someone's plumbing flying off the walls, basically. You know, kind of like that guy earlier. <laughs> had the guy there. So I don't know if this is in that segment or not, but uh, we watched the video earlier. So anyways, continue, please. <laughs> My mind was going here and there with all this plumbing yeah. information. Yeah. <laughs> but they did a good job so far. Yeah. This is why our customer's pump was running every five minutes. See how I'm pulling two pipes out of the well instead of one? That's because this customer uses a jet pump. So the pump is in the basement and not down in the well. And there it is. That's why the pump was running every five minutes. This is called the jet assembly. This one had a plug in the side of it, which had sprung a leak. And that's why the pump kept coming on. Now, if you're sharp, you'll notice that this pipe that we're working on is a little bit different than what we usually work on. That's because this pipe is called cray elastic pipe. It's what plumbers used to install back in like the 60s and 70s. So this pipe is at least 50 years old. And what it is, is actually just thin walled ABS pipe. If you don't know what ABS pipe is, it's the black hmm. drain pipe that is used in many parts of the U.S. Now, cray elastic pipe is very brittle. It constantly feels like you're about to snap it as you're handling it. Now, I wanted to replace it, but my dad said let's leave it in there because this customer wanted the cheapest fix possible. Now, we got the water back on. Everything worked. But what do you think? Should we have replaced it or left it down in there? I think you should, as a professional plumber, I think that you should have replaced it because anything that they don't make anymore and you're going to still use it is a bad idea. Yeah. So, um, and that's really just being real, like for the customer trying to save a little bit of money. Um, it's really not worth the money if you have to call a plumber out the second time to repair a fix that you already fixed the first time, but you didn't want to pay for the materials to fix it with uh, new piping. And so yeah. that's that's my only complaint yeah. on the video. I thought that the guys were being, you know, honest and, you know, whoever it was, I think it said it was his relative, but um, you definitely want to, you know, if, if there's yeah, piping that has been discontinued, and mm -hmm. is no longer in use you definitely want to replace, replace it. it back in 1990 i think it was 1990s early 90s um maybe it was late 80s they had a recall on um this polypex it wasn't pex at that time it was just poly piping polybutylene and um the company ended up going out of business and they recalled all of the piping and it was billions it was it was an ungodly amount 
of money that um, they had to fork out. Company went bankrupt. They had to replumb all of these houses um, that were in the class action lawsuit. And so, um, you know, if you have piping that's no longer in use, replace it it. with something that's better, of course, always. Yeah. Especially if you know for a fact that it's really hard to get, um, you want to just replace it with new. It's always a better idea. Mm-hmm. So that will save you more money in the yeah. future. It, it it will, with the plumbing. Well, if you put the same pipe that was there, you know, like fifty years ago, because mm-hmm. they don't make it anymore, you wouldn't want to put it back. I yeah. mean, <laughs> you would. That seems ridiculous. <laughs> so, in you my just opinion, need to fix it again and again. Yeah, it's yeah exactly. All the time. Well, yeah, it's job security yeah. is what it is. So <laughs> it gives you a project always consistent. I like it. All right, what's next? <laughs> yeah. If you haven't used PEX plumbing, don't be intimidated by it. It's not a big deal. It's actually pretty easy. You're going to need a few things. Obviously, you're going to need the PEX pipe. You're going to need whatever connections for the scenario that you're working on. So in this case, we're using 90-degree elbows. And then you're also going to need the crimps and the crimp tool, followed by a PVC cutter. will work fine to cut the PEX. So once you've got the PEX cut and in place, then you're going to put your crimps on. And then you're going to put your uh, elbow into place like you see here. And then from there, you're going to take this crimp tool and you're going to crimp it down. This tool is great because it actually has a little light that tells you when the crimp is set and so you just squeeze the trigger on this crimp tool until that light comes on and that's it you're done pex is extremely easy to work with and you can buy these in not only pex fittings but shark bite makes fittings for pex as well so get yourself some of these you got to have pex in the toolbox easiest way to do plumbing nowadays hey do me a favor if you like what we do i would really appreciate it if you'd like subscribe all right, that's cool. You know, so PEX, everybody uses PEX these days. Um, back when I started, when I was a plumber, um, in my apprenticeship years, everything was copper. And then, you know, it switched. Everything's now PEX. And PEX is great. Um, there's so many different styles of PEX. Um, that one was the crimp style with the rings. And so I think that was a shark bite brand. Um, and so they've got their own little crimp tool. Yeah, that looks they- so cool. I kind of want yeah, to try it's pretty cool. Um, the RTI brand, I think, is a little bit easier to use because it's um, it's one and done. Meaning, like, once you put the ring on, uh, there's, like, a tool that you actually crimp, and then that's it. And when it releases, then you're done. Yeah. The only issue that you run into with that is on the bigger sizes, it's a little bit harder to do. So having something with that pump thing, um, I've never used that. It seems kind of cheap, um, but maybe it's fine. It just seems like it's going to take you a long time to install that way because you're constantly doing that. Whereas the the other style is just a zip and you're done. And then you always know you don't have to wait for a light to tell you. Um, Once you zip it, it's a done deal. So, and you know, you can, because it puts a divot in the center of the band so that you know that it's complete. So, but yes, um, everybody should be using PEX. Um, we're supposed the best brand on the market. Um, it was the original brand that's cross-linked. And so they have different kinds of uh, plumbing PEX piping. And there's a lot of different manufacturers that are making PEX. But um, Wurzbo was the, uh, made by the Upanor company, is um, the original PEX product that made it back in the 70s. So. Um, but you're either, either, or is fine. It's good piping all the way around. So can't go wrong. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to tell that to my dad. Yeah. Use specs. Watching these videos makes me feel like I can do my own plumbing, but I think no. I'm just a Lulu. No. <laughs> Maybe. You might be like it that sounds guy like in the tower. <laughs> plumbing is very complicated. I'm going to yeah. stay yeah. as a YouTuber. It is pretty complicated, <laughs> honestly. What's the next? Part about being a plumber is that sometimes you have to dig. As you can see, Johnny's not a big fan of this, but it had to be done. This was an underground leak at the wellhead. You can see there, that's the pitless adapter. 
adapter. This is the fitting that connects your underground pipe to your drop pipe going down your well to the pump. And this is a pretty common problem to happen. A brass male adapter was used and you can see the well water ate right through those threads and that's where the leak wow. is. So people always ask us why we don't use brass and that's exactly why. In our area, it's pretty common for well water to be slightly acidic and it will eat right through the brass after a few years. As you can see, I came out of the pit list with a nipple. That way I wouldn't have to put a coupling in the poly and I offset my connection with an L and a street L. Leave a comment if you know why I did that. I had Johnny turn on and we were leak free and the customer was really happy to have this issue resolved. So we don't, I, I don't, um, well, be, there's a couple of reasons uh, that he did that just for the angle. Um, so when you go straight into it, the ground can settle. And when the ground settles, it can break, uh, it usually breaks the nipple, but it's galvanized. So I don't think that it would, but it could cause strain on the actual uh, plastic that polybutylene, and then that could uh, create a leak or create wear on it over time. And it would uh, create like a, like a pinhole leak or something like that. It didn't look like it was that deep in the ground. Um, but either way, uh, the ground does settle um, after you dig it up, it settles down, creates pressure. So the further that you're down in the ground, the more pressure it creates. Um, so if you're digging and you're, you're working on your plumbing and you go into a straight connection, then that's why he put that offset. Um, it's a good idea. Um, we don't use that kind of uh, polybutylene. We use PEX, which is a, a more a superior product than that because it lasts a lot longer. Um, but, you know, I know in some markets they use different products and things like that. But um, if you want a more permanent connection, then I would have used a Wurzbo connection. And so then it would have been a, a fitting that would have went on with uh, either a female adapter and then you would connect your piping onto it either with the stainless steel clamp that we saw before or Wurzbo makes an expanding uh, ring that actually expands into um, the, the piping itself and the piping is always closing or trying to close on it. That's the cross-linked membrane pipe. Um, that is the best pipe on the market. That's where Bo makes it um, by Upanor. But good job, guys. I thought it was good. So. Uh, it makes me realize how important yeah. and hardworking plumbers are. Well, Watch it's a dirty job. Yeah. And that's and that actually is clean work because that's off of a well, so um, you know it's like if that's if that's the cleanest you're gonna get as a plumber is working on water. Yeah. So. Not, yeah, but what's the nipple then? The nipple goes uh, well. So that's the funny thing about plumbing is that plumbing terms are uh, can be offensive to some people because everything mm -hmm. in the plumbing world is uh, either like a female adapter, a male adapter, a nipple. Um, yeah. There's like every kind of connection has to do with like threading <laughs> inside one or another, or they call it, uh, it'll mate up to it. So like pipes. So that's what we're talking about. We're talking about different kinds of ways to connect pipes. And so to connect a pipe, you have a female adapter and then you have to screw in a male adapter into it that's uh the plumbing terminology so it's an actual technical term female adapter male adapters and uh that's that's how plumbing works and if you actually uh go back to the original it was a lot worse they've changed a lot of the names now uh, but it was very like it would have seemed very uh misogynistic because someone would have said man why is all of the plumbing terminologies directed against you know like it seems like sexually related, but of course that's that's not uh, that's not what it is. It just uh, it just happens to be what it is. Well, so. as long as no one gets pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that they would. Let's hope not. <laughs> <laughs>